What's going on guys? So today on this show gear review, we're going to take a look at the thing that you patrons picked a while back and managed to build, but haven't been able to review until now in 2020. So the first review for you guys, and nobody else will see for a little while, is of course the new Figurize Standard Plastic Model Kit War Greymon Amplified. Yeah, so of course you guys probably saw this in my favorites and or best list from 2019 because it was a very, very good build. But before we get to that, we're going to look at the box. A fantastic image of Wargreymon right there. Bandai logo down there, figure out standard, Toei, all the things down here, all the cool stuff. Very nice image of Wargreymon there. And if you come to the bottom, you get some code. <laughs> He's doing the thing there. And you've got the hard uh, crundigizoid digizoid shell on his back. Unfolds like wings. Clear parts have been used for the inner sides. So that's actually really hard to, to say. I thought it was chrome digizoid. I really spelled it wrong. And it says the shell on the back can be removed, combined to make equivalent brave shield. An original gimmick allows the dream on killers and both arms to be attached to a single arm. Yeah, there's some pretty cool... Uh, things here, but just basically a whole bunch of close-up shots of him there And on that side you just get more box stuff And on the back you got a little read up there. It says featured in the Digimon Adventure TV anime series Partner Digimon Agumon, one of the main protagonists, Taichi Yagami Or Tai over here, which reached his ultimate form through final evolution as a dragon type appearance with a creature like look resembling Greymon clad in chrome digizoid armor is redesigned amplified recreation with a combination of two aspects of a focus on mechanical textures and structures something like that and it says six colored runners enable beautiful color recreation simply through assembly that's true and you got front view rear view amplified so a series which amplifies the textures of a character while paying respect to their original designs which also combines playability unique to plastic model kits Oh, okay, so the Amplified line is a whole thing. They do, of course, have uh, Omnimon or Omegamon, whichever one they want to call it, uh, Amplified as well. And I might pick that up down the line. You got to read the instructions. Don't tell me what to do. And you got ages 15 plus, PSP, little guy with the toilet, all the normal warnings right there. There's no three-year-old warning because I guess they do want three-year-olds to play with this. And no yen cost because annoying. I do believe it was somewhere in the 40 some odd dollar range. I believe uh, somewhere in there, 40 to 50 dollars, just depending on where you pick it up. Um, but yeah, there we go. New War Greymon, still upside down. Now, I think there may have been a War Greymon kit back in the day, which I think this amplified line uh, re engineers, because I do know, as we've seen, that. You know, Omnimon, uh, I did review before the old school version, and apparently it's a rework. That one is a reworked version of that kit. So there may have been a War Greymon that I don't know about in the past. Either way, we don't care about that. We're gonna look at this one. So let's get to it. Okay, and it is turntable time. Now you guys here on the Patreon, and of course the later people, will have seen this before because I did the whole video talking about the issues that this guy had, had. and. Other than that, I really did enjoy this build. It took me about a day or so to knock it out, or at least an afternoon, uh, not counting the extra stuff I had to do to him. Uh, but I did actually panel line him with pencil because I wasn't sure exactly how the plastic would react to normal um, panel line marker because you never quite know. And some of these figure eyes kits are a little bit finicky. So I used mechanical pencil just to see if I could do it. I think it came out pretty clean. For the most part, I used only a little bit of paint, pretty much just some red paint there on the chest and up here, some white paint back here on the shield wings, and then a tiny bit of black paint on his horns, basically just replacing virtually all the stickers that you would need to do. But I figured like his hoses and stuff like that should be shiny and just kind of, you know, did things up a little bit different. Now I did use, uh, what was it, Italian red, I believe was the color that I used in that case. And this is just some matte black that for some reason came across shiny. I don't know what's going on there. And it was just some straight up pure white for the symbols on the back plate. But that's enough for turntables. Now this guy is actually really big. So, I mean, he is a good, 
eight inches or more. So there's like a six inch quote unquote Luke. So he's a few inches taller than a Star Wars Black Series figure. And a normal-ish HG Gundam. Review will be coming soon. So you can see he's actually a very big figure. I was going to pull out some of the other figurized uh, things I've got built, but they're kind of tucked away at the moment. But either way, he's very neat. I love the details. I love the finish on the plastic. So the yellow is dull. I kind of dig that. He's not super bright yellow. A lot of people are painting it like a metallic gold, which is fine for you. I didn't want that. And as uh, discussed in the unboxing, I do like the silver. I like this gunmetal-y color. I dig all of that. Now, the nub marks are probably some of the worst things about it, and they're just in bad places, like right here, there, sides of the knees, stuff like that. <sighs> Without fully painting him, there's no way to avoid that. The yellows just disappear. The reds are pretty well hidden, so there's not really much you can do about there. Now, if we come up to his head... And you can see there, he does have his nice stickered eye. I actually like that. And you could put the black stickers along here on his horns. I just chose to paint that. The hair is nice, except for the fact that it does hit the back of the head. So if you keep his head down, you kind of avoid some of that problem. But other than that, it just is what it is. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull off his Dream On Killers or Destroyers, whatever you want to say. I think he's classified as a Draymond Destroyer. So Draymond Killers. Pull those off his arms so that we can go over articulation and stuff. He does have a hard time balancing. Uh, some of the leg joints are a little bit weird and the backpack is heavy. But just taking a quick look at these. You do get the bi-layered grays here. So some nice silver here along with the gunmetal there. You do have holes here so that something can plug in. Uh, there's nothing in the instructions about that. Maybe effect parts, I guess, if you want to get some uh, effect parts. And he does just plug into the forearms that way. And these things are really pointy and sharp. So really, these are not meant for kids. That's why this is age 15 and up. So I'm going to move those off to the side. I'm going to go ahead and pull off his wings as well. Which one tends to work better than the other. Which, by the way, I discovered when Eric came over last month uh, that I had had one of these put together wrong. So the ball joint end is meant to go inside here and this section, which has a flat side, not just totally round, is meant to plug into his back. And uh, I screwed that up for one of them and it was kind of hard to pull out. So there's his wings. I'll look at that in just a second, but I wanted to show off the details and stuff even back here on the back. So you can see a very nice Spinal armor in there. You get the only other stickers I use, just these metallic purples. I dig that. And I didn't do anything for his skin tone because I like the soft plastic and it looks a bit more like skin. And I wouldn't even know what kind of finish to give that. So I left all of that alone. I didn't even panel line the skin. Uh, one other thing I did do was paint the thumbnails, which would be a sticker otherwise. And I did just ever so lightly. Uh, shade between the fingers but i dig him now i'll show off the articulation without the backpack because it'll be a little bit easier so the head can move back he does have a hinge down there and then it does have a hinge here and he can rotate so it's kind of it's a ball joint there but the hair really gets in the way now when the wings backpack are on there it gets in the way a lot he can't even look up so there's that now he does have a joint here so he can move just a little bit, and of course, the actual waist. So he does rotate all the way around. A little bit of an ab crunch, so to speak. And the patron ears know that the shoulders were a big problem. So the gigantic shoulder blades are a massive problem here. So I'm going to raise the camera up ever so slightly. So these hinge in and of themselves, and that's fine, except that they come up and to get in the way of everything. And if you're trying to rotate to the backpack, those are gonna hit. So that's a big problem. But the bigger problem is that the shoulders themselves, while on a ball joint inside there and on a nice, uh, nice butterfly joint there, actually getting them to raise up is incredibly difficult. 
So I did have to clearance the shoulders quite a bit just to get him to where he can raise his arm up that much. And that's about as useful as it's going to get any higher and it's just going to start hitting things. And I did do that on both sides. So that's with the ball joint going up and the shoulder actually swiveling on the inside. That's about as good as I could get it. And yeah. So that's one flaw that the thing actually has. And being how the bicep is only plugged in by one small peg like that, it's not easy to move his arms. But that being said, he does have a ridiculous, <laughs> a ridiculous uh, butterfly, which completely breaks the sculpt. So you really don't want to pull it out that far. If you can, bicep rotation. Actually, let's go ahead and fix the shoulders back down a little. Those were nearly immovable. You see how much I'm struggling just to get them? Those were almost completely immovable before. Double jointed elbow, that gets them up to there. One thing I found strange is they don't give you alternate hands. You don't get like claw hands or anything. It's just got the holding hands because in theory, the Draymond killers are weapons, not part of his body. So these are actually handles he's technically holding. And uh, there are holes along here, here, and here, and then nothing there. His side skirts do move. They also have these little holes there, like you're supposed to plug stuff in there. It does have a hole in the butt if you're going to put them on a stand, so yay for that. I did paint the red on the inside of here, along with these hoses, so that's good. T-mounted ball joints, but I believe there's a drop down. Yep, there's a drop down and a raise up. Rotate at the thing. He can do an okay chorus line. Big old mechanical knee bends like so. And very nice Ninjamon. <laughs> I do like the uh, knee armor, though it is a little pointy. Be careful. It does have some Ultraman aspects to it. I kind of like that. Uh, the foot armor here is just on a hinge and only stays in this orientation where his foot itself can rotate up here. He does hinge like so and rotates down at the base i like the silver claws but apparently some people want to paint his claws white i guess and make it more agumon like but you can see now he's getting a little bit loose like without the backpack or anything like that you can get him to stand up pretty tall and straight but once you have the backpack on you kind of have to like really finagle things so i'm gonna just get him in kind of a a mean, a mean pose, a mean boy pose. All right, so we can do the Draymond Killers again. Once again, they just plug in on the arms, like so. That's cool. Now, if they want to do what they did in the on the box art, you can just sandwich those bad boys, like so. And you can move these claws if you really want to like pinch the crap out of somebody. And seriously, it will hurt. So please be careful. Okay, so now with the wings, seriously, this gotta kind of push that down, get them more stable. Um, so with the wings, just real quick, I'll show how they function. Basically, you just grab that and open it up, and you got the cool purple stuff in there. Once again, did the white paint. This was the lesser of goodness. You can see the really nasty thickness here. Super hard to get this to work so well. Kept wanting to collect around the edges, so I had to keep layering it, and I wasn't going to mask it off and go for it the hard way, but that's that. Now, um, unfortunately, as I've just discovered, I can't find the parts that make it into an arm shield. So it's just a little part that has a plug on it, and it plugs into the forearm, much like the Draymond Destroyers are, or Killers. And it actually just has two hole plugs for the wings to plug into. Now, it's probably here somewhere, but given that I've built so many Gumpla and stuff in, the, in recent days, along with, you know, having a very large Transformer and other stuff in the room... Odds are it's here, and it's just underneath something. I just looked for it for a few minutes and could not find it. But either way, you can eventually actually make a big old shield out of it now. There he is with the wings open. Now, he technically had wings, but I think he always looks better with the shield, you know, closed. Plus, once again, it's super heavy. 
symbol of bravery. And yeah, his feet keep spreading out. So it might be prudent to put him on a base of some sort. Get one of the figure I standard bases. Do that, but I really dig this. It's definitely one of my favorite builds. And it would have been a little bit higher on the list this year, if not for just the couple of major issues that it came with out of the box. But other than that, it's fantastic. It looks great. Even out of the box, if you don't do a full paint job on it, I really don't blame you. If you feel like it needs paint to look a little bit better, I mean, I guess it's your thing. You can do what you want with it. I felt like it was perfectly fine. Uh, I felt like the stickers were probably going to be dumb. Because they are kind of a wraparound two-part sticker for this. And then, I guess the white stickers back here probably would have been perfectly fine. And, you know, it would have been... <laughs> aside from the paint that now I don't like, I probably would have been perfectly happy with it. But, I mean, you can get this guy in some pretty good poses. You just need to balance him out well. Which is kind of the hard part. Oh, yeah. You kind of have to watch out for that. These things have a habit of popping off. Let's say that's one of the weaker parts of the construction is just the way these tab in, so to speak. Where is it? So somewhere in there. Maybe I have it upside down. Do I have it upside down? No, oh, I'm late. No, I got it right. Uh, what the heck? Got your nose hand to you, glass squirrel girl. Okay, so I had it upside down. What to do? Come on. Okay. So I got that done. That was very, uh, that really had some, uh, MG Destiny flashbacks there. You gotta make sure that you collapse the wing properly and like it, it kind of goes inside itself to some degree and that's why it started to pop off a little bit there and you can bend the knees down and you know get them in like a crouching pose get them in a superhero type pose if you want things like that i'm trying to be careful i don't want to catch all these sharp claws on the on the cloth here but basically it's pretty cool i do wish he came with like a big orange ball to be doing like the terra blast or whatever it's called Okay, so uh, we can bend the knees like that. So this is what I'm talking about. You got to really clear the backpack if you're going to do some stuff. So if you want to do that blast, that attack, you can get the arms up and over his head like so. So he can, he can maneuver pretty nicely, but... That's going to be it for this review, guys. Go ahead and give me that big old thumbs up if you haven't already. And hit that subscribe button because I know you guys really want to subscribe to make sure that I can get to a much higher level sometime soon. I'm doing really good right now. And I'm kind of liking that. I'm liking all this growth. Much like I like this figure. Oh, by the way, he does rotate. I forgot about this. He rotates here at the forearm around that. So you can actually turn the arm without having to turn the entire bicep and I like that once again head movement limited and make sure you go and check out all the other things and of course if you're on the Patreon and you didn't watch the unboxing go check out that now that you've seen the review and of course if you guys want to actually be able to pick things much like the Patroneers pick this a while back because normal people are not going to see this for a bit of time uh, by all means, check out the Patreon. But I'll catch you guys on the next review. And remember, as always, 
keep on digitizing. <laughs> I don't know. Bye, guys.